Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. As I said in the last mini review from PNSO, we are starting to really get to the bottom of the box, so there's not really any type of formula I can follow as far as species go, so this one's kind of a mixture, as we've got two marine animals, and we've got a feathered dinosaur, so a little bit of a mixture here. Again, no type of uh, theme going on or anything with these figures today. But we start, we've got Luffy the Anchiornis, Becky the Ophthalmosaurus, and Finch the Atopodentatus, which is a very, very strange name, and I'm not positive that I actually said that correctly. But, regardless, three very, very cool looking species. Again, you can see the backgrounds there are uh, basically a forested area and two watery type areas for the habitats. But without even attempting to look, because we've got a terrible glare, with the plastic that's covering them up, we will just go ahead, get them out of the package, and take a look at them from there. So there we go, we've got them out of their packages, and taking a look at the booklets for the Yankee Ornus, you can see uh, basically a forested area, but it's kind of blurred, so you can't really see it too well. And then, look at that, is incredible artwork, as always, that looks beautiful. Fantastic, fantastic artwork. And for the Ophthalmosaurus, I actually really quite like that habitat picture right there. I think it looks very cool. You can see some fish there in the background swimming up to the top of the water. And incredible as always. And the paint job on this, well, paint scheme really quite matches what you see on the actual figure. So that's always a plus two. And for the Atopodentatus, you can see, uh, again, some very nice watery type of a habitat. And wow, that thing is super weird looking. Look at how strange looking that is. Very cool artwork, but such a strange creature. Definitely something that I actually had not previously known about until right now. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these beautiful minis. So starting with the Yankee Ornus, you can see uh, again, very, very uh, feathered, super feathered type of a dinosaur. It is just completely loaded everywhere you look with feathering. And he's really in quite a, just a kind of a, just a standing type pose. He's really not doing too much. So there isn't too much really going on with the pose. Maybe he's just kind of perching on a tree, just checking the area out. So I definitely like the pose coming up here. You could see some very nice sculpt work of the feathers all over the head. I like that red type of a crest that it has going on up on the top there. I think that looks very nice. The eye is painted really quite nicely and there's a beautiful ring of lighter coloration around the eye really helping to elaborate the eye and just bring that thing and pop to you looks very very cool the way they've done that and you can see a yellow coloration here that is primarily on the beak and uh really makes that beak kind of jump at you as well i think that looks very nice and then as we start to run down the neck you can see that feathering really looking quite nice beautifully sculpted all over the place kind of has like a somewhat soft but bushy feathering going on and there's some nice airbrushing that's been put into this you can see a lighter coloration here in the back of the neck but it is primarily a gray but again you can see all sorts of variations of gray throughout the body just giving it difference in color i think it looks very beautiful the way that the paint has been applied of this figure nice wing feathers here you can see that they look really really nice the flight feathers and everything all over here in the back of the wing are really sculpted quite nicely and there's a lot of detail that's really included in the actual feathers themselves and I definitely like the paint scheme that they've got going on here with those black stripes and that white coloration I think it looks very cool as well and then you start to run down the legs here you can kind of see a sickle claw sticking up very nicely sculpted and these feathers here are really really bushy that run the entire length of the leg it looks super cool and that design goes the whole length down of the legs and then we come up here into the very nice tail feather that it's got going on here well tail feathers very beautifully sculpted and again very flashy but very realistic even the underside of the animal has very nice sculpt work of the feathering and everything beautifully done really really nice looking figure the color of the feathering here on the tail looks fantastic I like that it's got like a whitish color but then on this side it's just a gray and it really Overall meshes quite well and really looks beautiful and you can see the base here Just kind of appears to be maybe like a forest floor as you can see some tree branches laying around here and there 
A very, very nice looking base. Again, lots of very nice sculpt work has been included in it. Beautiful detailing. Definitely a super cool figure. And then we've got the Ophthalmosaurus. And I've really been uh, looking forward to looking at this one because of how bright and shiny looking it is. It has uh, kind of a metallic type of a coloration to it, sort of. But uh, at the same time, I think that looks really, really cool. And it gives it such a nice wet look that I think it was a great choice as far as the coloration goes of the figure. Starting up here at the head sculpt, I think the head sculpt is pretty much spot on and it looks beautiful. Again, that beautiful coloration, that blue is so vibrant and so, so nice to just look at. And I like that they've included some white kind of striping that goes from the lower jaw up onto the upper jaw here. Gives it a very nice flashy look to it. You can see the nostrils are sculpted out there and those eyes are very big and beautifully painted. There is no sloppiness at all. Nice black pupil. And the amount of uh, sculpting of the detail, the skin detail and everything is really incredible. Again, for being so tiny, there is just an insane amount of sculpt. Even those flippers, look at the flippers. Beautiful amount of sculpt work and really nicely applied paint. Everywhere that you can see on this figure is just super highly detailed. Nice dorsal fin up there. Very nice sculpt work on that as well. And the overall body has just an incredible amount of uh, small detail included in something, again, you would think would be very smooth. There's just an insane amount of detail, even on the flippers back here. And then you run out the length of the tail. And again, that sculpt work does not cease on both sides. It looks fantastic. Nicely sculpted fin. And then we take a look here at the whole body. Looks great. This side, even the head sculpt on this side also looks fantastic. I love the way the eye is uh, painted. It's perfectly painted. No sloppiness at all. The underside even looks really nice. And that white is so bright white. And the blue is so vibrant. It's just super, super nice looking. Very appealing to the eye. And the fins all look great. Tons of great sculpt work all over in the fins. So overall, this is incredible. And uh, definitely, without question, my favorite out of all the marine animals that has been included. And now for the strangest animal probably in the entire set of PNSL figures, we've got the Atapodentatus, and boy is he a weird looking animal. Definitely very, very unique. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see that he is a very, very strange head sculpt, and uh, very probably signature to this animal species. Very strange looking mouth area. Nicely sculpted nostrils. <laughs> it's just super weird looking. I've never heard of this animal before, so I'm going to definitely have to look into it now that I've seen it. Uh, it's very weird. Nicely painted eye. It's nothing more than a black coloration, but it looks good. has kind of a gloss to it. That blue really accents the face and really sets that whole tone of the face and the sculpt and the figure itself. And that blue is really, really nice. I think that that looks cool the way they've applied that and really makes that whole strange looking face jump out at you because of that blue coloration. It just kind of attracts your eye straight to it. Nice sculpt work even on the underside. And you can see as you look here, they've done something that they did with the Ceratopsians that I was a big fan of and included a light wash to really help bring out all the detail and sculpt of the figure itself. Look at that really nicely done wash. Looks beautiful. I love when they include washes. I think it really takes the figure to another level of realism. You can see all sorts of creases in the skin and uh, the hand and everything. The arm all looks really nice. Beautiful skin detail. The feet themselves just have an insane amount of detail in them. Really nicely done. You can see some more nicely sculpted skin detail and the skin texture as we run down the length of the animal. And again, that beautiful uh, paint that's been applied, very nice tones. You can see it starts out as a blue up there, and I guess to a little bit of a lighter color, then a light brown, then like a dark, almost a black color. And now we're turning and uh, gradually turning into a brown again, but it's got a few different shades of brown included in it. So, so many different tones of coloration in this animal. Very, very impressive uh, paint application. And again, you can see the very nicely sculpted feet, beautifully done. That beautiful wash, again, bringing out the very nice detail that is included in the sculpt. And then we come out into the length of this tail, which is also almost as strange looking as the actual head sculpt. A very, very weird looking animal. And then looking at this side again, 
coming down the length of the body you can see that very strange long looking arm and the nicely sculpted hand and that nice wash once again bringing out the beautiful beautiful detail of the skin texture very nicely done lots of very very small minute details included in the sculpt of this figure and again that rear foot and leg and then we run out the length of the tail again even the underside sports some very nice sculpt and detail and overall this is such a strange animal that I have never heard of before so now that I've seen this and PNSO has created a minifigure of it I'm definitely going to look into this a lot more and kind of research it a little bit as I'm really quite interested to learn more about it which is one of the many good things I think about PNSO presenting such obscure species of animals because it spikes your interest and gets you interested in things like this and it's an animal that I probably never would have heard of otherwise because I highly doubt anybody's going to be making figures of this anytime soon so thank you PNSO for being awesome enough to create figures of animals like this that you otherwise would never get a figure of and this is a really really beautiful rendition of said animal very nicely done by PNSO as far as his size goes for the Ankyornis from the tail to the head he's not very long you're looking at about three inches in length or about seven and a half centimeters and for a height you're a little over two inches or about five centimeters for the Ophthalmosaurus for a length from the tail to the tip of the mouth you're looking at a little bit between uh, almost about three and a half inches or a little over three and a quarter probably or about eight and a half centimeters and there again isn't much of a height or anything there's really only a length it's a very thin and uh, small figure so there's not too much going on so we'll really only measure the length and for the atopodentatus from the tail to the head you're looking at about three and a half inches or about nine centimeters and again it's similar to the Ophthalmosaurus where you just don't really have much else going on. Maybe you could do a width from arm to arm, but there's not going to be too much. You're about 2 inches or about 5 centimeters that way. It's still very cool. For a size comparison, there is our friend the Papa Rex next to these very small minifigures. It appears as though he caught himself an Ophthalmosaurus. But again, giving you a good idea of the sheer miniature size of these small PNSL figures compared to the Papo Rex. Now the Papo Rex is a fairly decent sized figure, so again that shows you that these aren't the smallest figures in the world. If you think that you're just gonna get a tiny figure that's so small, definitely a decent size. They're bigger, I think, than the Jurassic World minifigures. Some of them are, some of them are a little smaller. It's really kind of uh, depends on the figure, but honestly this should give you a pretty good idea of these figures and just how beautifully sculpted they are for their sheer small size. So three more absolutely beautiful PNSO minis and again showing you that we are now kind of at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to these figures because we don't have any type of a theme going on anymore or anything like that. They're just kind of whatever's left we're going to review but that shows you that it took this long. I think this is probably like review 13 or 14 I can't even remember at this point. But it took that many reviews to really kind of steer clear of any type of a theme. So that shows you just how many insanely awesome minifigures are included if you buy this full box set of these minis. Or you've got your choice again of buying each one individually if you'd rather go that route. Regardless, three more fantastic figures and three more figures that are just so different from each other. And uh, also just really obscure. All three of these species are super obscure species. We have the Ankyornis, which I've never seen a figure of ever. The Ophthalmosaurus, which I've also, I don't recall ever seeing a figure of. If there was one, maybe Collect A pulled one out, but I don't remember there being one. But we do also have the large scale vinyl Ophthalmosaurus recently released by PNSO. So there is at least another version of that in a much larger scale. And then you've got the Atopodentatus, which is just the weirdest animal I've ever seen. And again, something that in my opinion has probably never gotten a figure, maybe never even a resin kit or anything. I don't ever remember seeing anything on this animal before, so super obscure species, but super awesome of PNSO to go ahead and make these for us because it's awesome to be able to own animals that you would not normally otherwise get an opportunity to own. These figures are all really highly detailed and all beautifully painted. Each one individually just looks fantastic. Definitely highly recommended from me as far as these minifigures go. So if you do want to buy any of these three minifigures, I will include links in the description to each and every one of them. 
for you to purchase as I highly recommend each one. So check the links in the description. I will also include a link to the entire box set of all 48 figures for you if you would like to go that route, which I definitely recommend you do because it is an awesome, awesome box set. So go ahead, buy yourself some minifigures. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.